Hey guys, I'm Rachel O'Leary. Before we start the video, I just wanted to preface it with a quick explanation. I've been doing the Species Spotlights every Sunday now for almost two years and it's been super fun, but I've realized over time that you guys have asked a lot of the same questions or that I've left some things out in some of them, so I may start to revisit a few of them and redo them. Now I'm gonna leave the originals up, but I'm gonna label them part one and part two. Uh, for instance, today we're going to talk about Ancestress again, and that's mainly because I'm focusing this month on plecos and catfish. And I really wanted to show you guys some of the color variations and different sizing, etc., with the various Ancestress species. So you may see, and I'd love to hear from you if there's uh, various species spotlights you'd like to see more information on. Let me know below. Let's get to the video. Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight and as promised this week we're going to talk about Ancestress plecos. In my mind one of the most versatile, beautiful and appropriate plecos for the average aquarist. They are great algae eaters, relatively easy to feed, super easy to breed and come in a huge range of colors. Today I'm going to be showing you my super reds, my standards, my calicos, some long fins, and some lemon seams, all of which are breeding in my fish room now. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. Now this is an obvious male ancestress. Generally about, about two and a half inches, they develop those long tubercles on the end of their nose, which marks them as male. Now the females can get very small ones, but never anything like the males. These are lemon seams that I picked up from a breeder in Ohio, and they have a very typical ancestrous appearance with that mottled brown speckling. They're quite lovely. There's over 150 species of ancestrous found all over South America, though most commonly what we see in the hobby are line bred variations of ancestrous cirrhosis. There are tons and tons and tons of color streams. And they're really, really beautiful. And what people do is they get a fish that has an interesting color trait and they breed it back to another one and they keep reinforcing those color traits through breeding until it becomes a dominant color trait. It takes some time, but you can get some really beautiful fish like my super reds, like calicos, like lemons, and the blue eye long fins. You know, this can be done for both color and fin structure and it's a very rewarding project. Ancestress are relatively simple to breed, basically doing it by themselves. In fact, I like to joke with Ancestress, all you really need to do is add water. Now that's not entirely true because you need to keep feed them properly, keep the water really clean, and provide them structures that allow them to, be, to do their breeding behavior. Let's take a look at my Super Reds. Now these are younger fish. They're only about two and a half inches and just now starting to show their sexual dimorphism. We can see this guy coming towards me has those bristles starting on his nose. And he's probably the father of all the fry that I have in this aquarium. He's the only one that has super obvious bristles at this point, though you can see some others starting to get them. And I think he's quite a handsome fellow. Now, these ancestors, like most loricarids, are made up of bony plates, which makes them a really tough fish. And it makes them really appropriate to house with a wide range of other fishes. The vast majority of the species get between four and five inches, and all of them are cave breeders. They're mainly herbivores. However, they're very, very easy to feed, readily accepting most dried foods, though it's a good idea to offer them vegetable matter, things like blanched zucchini or courgette, green beans, Brussels sprouts, things like that um, to sort of aid in their digestion. They do have super long digestive tracts in order to process the cellulose and sort of the tough fibrous materials that they eat, which means they also produce a lot of poop. And they do enjoy having driftwood in their aquarium, mainly because um, biofilm grows on it, and that is part of their natural diet. However, they are not Canucks. They are not specific wood eaters. So wood is not absolutely required as long as you're giving them a well-balanced diet with lots of herbivorous matter in it. Now in this aquarium, I'll show you on Tuesday how I set it up for breeding. There is a ton of fry all over the place, and I'll see if I can find one for you. In fact, I see a little teeny tiny right there, right by that apple snail. 
And as you can see, the adults don't bother with the babies at all. And this is great because these guys can spawn like crazy. And I find that they do best if I just leave the eggs where they lie. The father or the male will trap the female in a cave for her to deposit her eggs. He kicks her out, he fertilizes them, and then he guards the eggs for about a week until they become wigglers. After about three to four days of being wigglers, they then emerge from the cave and behave just like the larger guys, if not a little more fragile. Now, I prefer to not house these guys with other bottom feeders, things like Coriodorus, simply because fish that eat from the bottom tend to explore with their mouth. And that can be very dangerous to ancestress fry. Now these guys have the widest distribution of the genera, as I mentioned, being found all over South America. And I think they're really cool fish. Let's take a look at some other color variations. Here we have a juvenile albino longfin. You can tell even at just over an inch that the vast majority of energy when these guys are growing goes into their finnage first before their body length. So it's very easy to tell from a very small size whether they're gonna be short fin or long fin. Now the parent of this fish was a long fin female, standard color, who's on the glass and just not cooperating. But the father was an albino, and they're really quite lovely. I don't find that the long fins interfere much at all with motility in ancestress plecos. For the most part, I tend to avoid fishes that have long fins if it affects their motility because it just seems unnecessary to me and it's just a designer fad. That doesn't mean they're not lovely and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong if you enjoy them. Personally, I prefer a standard fin. Now we can see just a peak of the mama's uh, anal fin showing up over there and I'm hoping she's going to cooperate and come out for you to see how spectacular these long fins can really be. You can see the sucker mouth that they have that shows that they grasp onto their food and rasp it. There we can see her big fins. I even keep ancestress in with my African shell dwellers. In fact, ancestress can be kept with a wide range of Africans because they're really good at cleaning the rock work and they don't tend to get picked on because they're not super active fish. They're very, very popular for this reason better view of that big female long fin standard colored ancestress. Isn't she lovely? Now in this aquarium I keep my calico ancestress which is sort of a reddish color with brown modeling. It can often be difficult to see them in here because there's so many plants. Here's the big male calico ancestress. This fish is well over four inches long and really, really nice. You can see how long those bristles are and how they get that Y formation at the end. This is a perfect example of an adult ancestress male, and I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. As always, thank you guys for your continued support. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And make sure you let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions. All in all, I just really think ancestors are one of the best suited plecos for a community aquarium for the average aquarist.